I'm here alongside several generations of Mets catchers. On my left, you have Mr. Todd Pratt, Barry Lyons, Mackie Sasser, and Mr. John Stearns. Uh, we're going to be talking with these gentlemen about how the game has evolved from the eyes behind the mask. So I think we'll start out with the first question, really simple. Who's the best pitcher you've ever caught, Todd, and why? Uh, there was a lot of them, but uh, you know, I just remember catching Al Leiter, and uh, a lot of times it seemed like I always got to catch his starts, uh, just dominating in, in that era in 99 and 2000, and always clutch when we needed a game. And just with that power cutter, he just he would eat up bats. Barry, I got a, a little hunch about who yours might be. Well, Doc Gooden, obviously, uh, uh, at the height of his career, I was able to catch him a few times. Matter, matter of fact, my first big league start, uh, I had the pleasure of catching Doc. But I was matched up more so with David Cohn, who was, a, uh, as Doc is, a friend of mine. But uh, I was uh, really enjoyed catching David and his variety of pitches that he threw. And, and, but our entire pitching staff was phenomenal back in those days. Myself, I, I think Dave Cohn was probably the most aggressive pitcher. Like to dominate a game. Um, as far as that, um, probably had the nastiest stuff I ever caught. Um, as far as power, it was Randy Johnson when I went with Seattle for a couple of years. He just dominated a game from both sides of the plate with a, he just overpower guys. Uh, obviously, Tom Seaver. Uh, I was a rookie in 75, and Seaver was uh, still dealing for the Mets. It was really surprising because my rookie year, I think I got a bunch of starts with him, and I think he went nine and one with me back there, and he didn't mind throwing to me, which was surprising to me. Uh, he threw fastball, slow curve, he had a little cut slider and a change up, mixed everything up, threw about mid-90s, and just was uh, incredible on the mound, the best pitcher I ever caught. Mackie, how has the game evolved, particularly from the catcher's point of view? Well, I think, you know, as far as a catcher, you know, I, I learned how to catch in the minor leagues. You know, I played shortstop in college. So I learned a lot at the level that I need to le you know, learn at was Major League Baseball. I think the thing that made it so easy for me was they throw a lot of strikes. The guys know what they're doing with the ball. We learn how to, you know, call the game, do what we have to do. And pretty much you put the finger down where you want it, the guys through where you needed to. Yeah, Todd, you've gone into coaching. What have you seen happen on that side? I just, uh, I think analytics has really helped us uh, on the receiving end. Uh, getting strikes called that maybe are off that plate a little bit. So we're, at, we're able to judge catchers not only by our eye, but also by the computer. And that really has helped us to teach. So that's the pitch framing we're talking about. How yes, yes. Guys, yeah. you know, strikes you getting uh, per inning and, and per mm -hmm. pitch. How many strikes is someone getting that shouldn't have been a strike? Right. I mean, that used to be a, a tricks of the trade. You know, yes. the, the veteran catchers are able to work that corner, work that umpire a little bit. Now it's more data driven and you can see those pinpointed points. Uh, for Barry, um, you know, do you think the game is involved and is too much information too much? It, it can be to a certain degree. Obviously, I'm not directly involved in the game today, so I, I don't have all of the analytical da data that they have. But uh, sometimes you can overkill with too much information and get guys thinking too much instead of just trusting their stuff, which was the key phrase back in the day was trust your stuff. And, and certainly uh, there was no way to quantify or to evaluate framing the pitches and, and getting those pitches uh, back in, you know, in, in a previous generation of, of playing the game. But today, uh, with all the technology and all the ways of measuring things, I think sometimes it definitely can be over, overused. So now we talk about the computers and how they've helped you, know, you kind of figure out what the data means. Keep that little black book on hitters and know what you're going to do before that night. You, know, you set up your whole game plan. And how often did you stick to that game plan? Well, uh, the game plan is, is uh, somewhat important, but I, th I think the most important thing for pitchers is obviously to work ahead in the count as opposed to working behind in the count. And the key counts that you want to avoid if you're pitching is 1-0 and and 2-1. and Because on those counts, the hitter can basically sit on a fastball and not swing at anything else. So if we go 1-0 and to somebody, now, if I'm hitting and I'm 1-0, and I'm going to sit on a fastball. I'm not swinging at anything else. And now if we throw a strike and where we miss with it, if we don't throw a fastball there and we throw, 
Now it's two and zero. Oh. So especially, and then also on the two and one count, which we want to avoid, we uh, are, are. I mean, the hitters are looking for a fastball right there. So, so you want to be able to, when you're calling the game, if you can stay away from one and zero oh and two and one, you're probably going to have a pretty good game pitched by that pitcher and calling the game that way. So, for a lot of people, what they don't realize is that no matter what generation you're from, you're trying to get the most out of that pitcher. And you're not always working with the ace, the number one, the big dog. It's essential to have a catcher be that guide. Maybe talk about a time that you had to guide a pitcher along the way and does shaking off bother you guys? Well, uh, that's uh, catcher's primary duty is to make sure your pitcher is successful and to know each and every pitcher on your staff what their out pitch is, what, uh, what motivates them, what helps them be successful, and you got to learn to, to utilize that, whether it be some guys really getting on them hard and, and pushing them, some guys trying to you know, hold them back a little bit and calm them down, and some guys just, uh, you know, you got to kick them in the rear sometimes. But that's, that's a, a major part of the catcher's role. And uh, as far as, uh, you know, Pitcher shaking off. Uh, when uh, the pitching staff trusts the catcher, you see very little of that. Uh, and I didn't mind it, you know, on occasion. But really, uh, the guys that learn to trust their catchers and, and, and trust in what they're doing back there, you, you don't see very many shakeoffs. That's true. Todd, for you, what's one thing an average fan might not know about? your job what's what else is there entail they know that you got to catch the ball and throw the ball back what's some things throughout the day that you have to do to well i think uh especially for being a catcher you almost have to be a psychologist you got to be able to work with your pitching staff and knowing all the different personalities and and c continue to communicate with them throughout the day so they have to where barry said trust you it's more than just on the field they got to be able to trust you as a friend, teammate, and knowing that what's going on at that time, you got it in control for them so they can just pitch. You think that's the reason catchers make such great managers? I think so. They know the game in and out. They see the field. They know everything that's going on. They know how to call games. They're the general, you know, like I teach my college kids. They're the general. They run the team. And that's what we try to do is run our team, know what's going on out there, who we need to put in different places. But the main thing, like you said, is it's about the pitcher. We try to make suggestions for him, and if you don't want to throw it, then that's fine. You know, but we should know what he wants to throw if we've been catching him long enough to know what's going on. Then there might be certain situations where he might not have that good stuff that day. So we really got to work our butts off to do what we need to do. And the one thing a lot of people don't realize is, you know, you have to have confidence in your pitcher, like Barry said. You know, that guy on third base and wants to throw a ball in the dirt, you have to block that ball. You have to have his confidence to be able to throw the pitches you need to throw. So, but, it, you know, from a, from a catcher's point, I mean, the main thing is being on the right page with him before they get ball game, I think. Just knowing what we're doing and how we're doing it. Now, you guys obviously know your craft, blocking balls, holding the running game, helping that pitcher along on the offensive side of things. Would you rather get two hits in the game and an RBI, or be able to get that pitcher through a big jam and be able to help the team win? Well, the primary role is the defensive aspect of it. So a catcher that doesn't take pride in, in you know, working his pitching staff and, and working a certain pitcher through a good game. I mean, the 2-1 the game that, uh, you know, you made pitches when you needed to and got out of uh, potential big innings. and and when the game certainly is gratifying for the catcher and, and not very obvious to the average fan. But the pitcher knows, the pitching coach knows, and, and management of the team should know. Sometimes they don't and don't appreciate the catcher enough. But uh, yeah, we all want to go three for four and hit a bomb and drive in a couple of runs, sure. But defensively, that is uh, the primary uh, role of the catcher and anything that you can get uh, offensively is a bonus, but obviously there's been a lot of great offensive catchers in the game, but uh, the catcher's role, once again, is defense first. Any little tricks of the trade about working with an umpire? How can you 
get, you know, every, every umpire has their own zone. So you talk about now maybe getting robot umpires and having a set zone. One of the crafts is knowing that umpire as well. Well, I think you've got to come out and uh, I tried to make friends with the umpire. In other words, talk, just talk to them a little bit. When you, like when you come out to open the game up, say hello, how you doing, what's going on, what's, uh, what's happening, let them know what's going on in your life, and just do it a little bit at a time so you create a relationship with the umpires. And, and if you're catching a lot, you can do that. I mean, you, you have these guys and you're, you're I'm not saying you're going to be, get into a big conversation with them. Hey, what's going on with this? How's your son and how's your family? But just saying hello to them basically and showing them respect will get you that edge that you need to get that close pitch that might be, you know, you set the glove up two inches off the plate and he hits it strike, you know, as opposed to him calling that pitch a ball. So, you know, you, you try to work, uh, you try to work, I'm not saying you work the umpires, but if you befriend them and you're honest with them, they'll know that and as down the road you'll develop a relationship with him that, that will help your uh, situation in, the, in game time. Uh, it's got to be a fine line, right? You're in the heat of the battle, you wanted that, just that last pitch, you know, you, you know that you don't want to push it too far. Maybe tell us about one time that an umpire and you kind of almost went to that over the edge, I would say. Um, you know, I didn't, I wasn't friends with any of them. <laughs> so, I mean, because at the end, they're going to get me at the end. But there was mutual respect, just the way that uh, how I handled and worked there. To get to the question, I believe it was one time I was with Philadelphia. And... Uh, it was Piazza was at the plate and, those, and we were hitting that corner. I mean, nice and there were balls and I kept this going, hey, hey, kind of ribbing the umpire. I said, hey, you know, if that was me, those are strikes. And he just kept saying, this is the first inning. And he's kept saying, Tank, you know, that's enough. And I just said, man, you know, and Piazza's smiling at me. This is after I was traded and he's smiling because he knew. And I guess I said one too many words. I kept my <laughs> face straight, didn't, didn't do nothing. He kicked me out of the game and I walked back in the dugout, and Weber thought was getting the, his day off. I walk in the clubhouse, and he's got his underwear on. <laughs> so Shea Stadium's going crazy, booing, you know, and it, like because the game was delayed for about ten minutes, you know. And I just said, "Hey, man, I'm sorry," you know. So that was kind of a ooh on my part, but I was sticking up for the team, and uh, sometimes you have to do that. Indeed, Mac, anything? Well, I, I just think you got to show them respect. I think you'll get more out of them. You know, I used to, I, you know, I was always told never turn your head and talk to them, never get in their face, just talk to them. And, uh, and the one guy that I always had to talk with was Bobby Ojeda, because he always wanted to dump that little change up on the outside part of the plate and try to get those extra two inches. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just, hey man, if he's gonna, if he's gonna pitch all day, we got, we got to have that pitch. And just try to work with him and talk to him. I never really had a problem with the umpire. I was just, you know, polite with the southern accent. Just work it the best I could. Smooth, so, he's smooth. So well, I want to thank you fellas for joining me. Uh, tremendous insight from the men behind the mask. You guys have taken a lot of abuse, especially from pitchers like me over the years. And I want to thank you for your service because indeed you have made us all a little bit better and each time out, the pride that you take in that aspect of guiding us pitchers along and controlling the game is, makes you as great as you are. So thank you guys for joining me thank and you thank you guys for watching.